let's get a little bit into spirituality. You talk about spirituality and embodied music. Um, I guess let's take it all the way back to your childhood. You were raised in the church. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, a lot of stuff that was like, I don't want nobody to jump down my throat because I know how Christians get. So a lot of stuff that some like some stuff to say, you know, like if I say something to you that really is truth and sits with you, whether you don't like it or not, it's gonna hit your soul. You see what I'm saying? Like it's, we talk, and it, it, it's not just talking to a human being; you talking to the soul. So it'll register with your soul. So some stuff with Christianity, like hit me. I was like, oh dang, that sound, that sound truthful. But then a lot of stuff, it was like, it felt like it was uh, summarized to keep us in trap. So that was, my re that was my reason for gravitating away from any religion. Because it's all just entrapment. You know what I'm saying? Some, like, religion pretty much is just what betters the soul. But my reason for not wanting to deal with it, because you could give us this book. We could sit right here and write this book. If we had all the secrets that our ancestors had, all the jewels our ancestors had, all the trials that our ancestors had, if we had those, we can write that book and tell you how to live, not mix that with science. Tell you how your body actually worked. Now you like, okay, now I know how to move. So that's why I don't deal with, and then it instills fear. We know fear is, besides, besides the positive energy, fear can make a man crumble. The Bible instills fear, or religion, anything. You don't, li you don't live this way, you're going to do this and burn. That's fear. Now I'm living out of fear because I'm scared. Oh, man, I ain't going to go to heaven because I was doing this. That's not it. That's not it. Nobody knows what goes on. They, they testing it, science testing it, but nobody knows what goes on after life. From my, from my research, people have been happy as hell when they on their deathbed, they last 10 seconds. They smiling. So who are you to, to say that death isn't a beautiful thing? You see what I'm saying? So it's all about perspective. As you moved away from religion, you're not tied to the church or a specific community. How do you sustain your spiritual health? How do you keep your spirits up on a daily basis? Being in my own world and knowing what I'm trying to create. So if it's, a lot of times I just go blank. It's like an on and off switch. I might be sitting there and now I'm feeling out. I might even go back to a childhood situation. What made me do this right here the other day? Why you even doing it? Why you feeling like that? So, and that's all, that's all spirit. Or maybe thinking, okay, what kind of, what shock are you operating out of? You, Cause you thinking some crazy stuff right now, bro. You feeling some type of weight, lift your vibration up. So stand in tune with my inner self, in which when I learn how to do that, as far as like from meditation and, and reading and, and cutting myself off just from the world period, isolation, that that's, that's exactly how I keep it up. So it's nothing for me to just be on the road and not be there, but still there. Cause I'm always feeling out the inside of myself. I'm always just feeling out the inside of myself. Cause I understand if that if that right there is not lifted up, then it's a problem. So in your Like when I first when I first got on the spiritual journey, so like a year, I say I say that's reaching. I say like eight or nine months. So like the first, like for eight or nine months, it was no TV. Even even my own child's mother, what I was dealing with at the time, she can vouch for it. It was no TV. It was no rap music. It was no it it was no anything that was low vibrational. So. <clears throat> and I was just meditating. I had a schedule. I wake up, stretch, say an affirmation, go meditate. And I, when I meditate, I was, I was hitting my chakras. 
on top of the audio books and the type of books that my brain was taking in. I was making sure I was taking in uplifting, positive, moving forward information. struggling for so long it had got normal you know what I mean like we come we come from the struggle we come we so it got normal that's about breaking them patterns remember we mentioned the patterns so yeah so it's it's so normal but we struggled when we was younger sometimes it'd be like 11 people in the house go to the refrigerator ain't no food in there so you gotta either make a wish sandwich or go hungry till it's time to get some food. Till it's time, to, I mean, to the food, cause money, money was like that. So then you go back to when I'm actually an adult, and now I'm out here in the real world. It's, it's, it's. Man, I had to sleep on air mattresses. I slept on air mattress for like two years when I was with my child's mother. We was on air mattress. We was in and out of different homes. It, it was it was ugly. Then we, once I left her, I was homeless for almost a year. I'm sleeping in my car. I could have definitely went back to mom and daddy house on, on some shit like, oh, nah, but I didn't, that didn't feel manly to me. That didn't make me feel like I had power in my life. I felt like I was giving my life back to a, to a parent, because we know how parents can be sometimes. They can be controlling. They want to, instead of giving you advice, they want to just tell you what you what they what they put their perspective on you. Like you should do this, you need to do be doing this. Why are you doing this? So my thing my thing was I create my own life. So what did I do coming out of leaving my child's mother to put me in this situation? And if I created that situation, I can always create something better. So it was being strong. I would sleep in the car, go handle my business. It's happy. Wake up happy. Wake up happy, happy doing it. Why? Because I know I'm creating what I'm doing. Go back to perspective. I feel free. It ain't like somebody just tired, like like I got to worry about what somebody think. Nah, I go back to this car happy. I had to give my homeboy some time. Remember, I'm going to give you $20. Why? Because my credit messed up. I can't go get me no house at this time. I can't go get me no house at none of this. So this is what I created. Some of it might have been out of ignorance. Some of it was being ignorant. But at the same time, this is what I created. I can create something else. So, yeah, but once again, perseverance. So you mentioned being homeless and touch a little bit on this, but what was your life like at that time? And what was on your mind those mornings that you're waking up in your car? Shit, fun. Life is fun. I mean, like, I remember my homeboy, he was like, I used to go over there and smoke with him. He was like, man, why are you so happy? Bro, why not? We got limbs, we got fingers, we got eyes, we can see, touch. We supposed to be happy, man. You supposed to touch that. Let alone, I ain't got no extra going on with a woman, so I ain't got to worry about dealing with her. I'm just waking up. Hey, this is, this is us right here. We can get up. If I don't want to... I hope y'all don't do this, but if I don't want to wipe my ass today, I ain't got to worry about nobody. Like, oh, you didn't take no bath, man. You stink, man. Nah, this is me. I'm happy. I'm free. This is what this is what I would do. But yeah, it's just being happy, being like like I said, knowing that you got yourself. That's another comfortability. Knowing that I got myself. I ain't got to lean on nothing. So once anything go wrong, it's nothing I can't come back from because I know how to handle myself. I done been in the treacherous situations. Mm. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm gonna speak on it. Uh, I tried, man. It was like in this stand in the car situation. I don't know if my family wasn't was feeling like I think I'm too good, or maybe they thought I was quote unquote crazy because my views on life wasn't the same as theirs. So I was. I'm like I said, I'm alone. I'm not around no family. I'm not around nobody. So situation situation went on with my mom and my little brother, and I had just lost like twenty five hundred 
$3,000. So I'm down, I'm hurt, I'm hurt. I don't know where the meal gonna come from, no gas. This ain't going like it needs. So I try to run my car off the road. Don't know how I, st I made it. Run my, run my car off the road and then um, I was just trying to end it, really. That was my main thing, I was just trying to end the shit. In a situation, I bounce back, get out of that, I get into it with this other chick. In that situation right there, I don't even want to go in depth on that. It was so much that went on in the seven, eight months that it really just threw me like, like, damn, is this the universe telling me I need to transition? It's time for me to just come on home because you done put in your work. But then when I realized, and like I said, I was thinking to myself, it was just telling me there's something greater coming. I was facing life. Life on top of 80 years. All the charges added up. That's just in one county. We go to another county, we got damn 10 more charges. And I was like, man, I remember calling, I remember calling my homegirl at the time. I'm like, man, it's time for me to transition. It's too much going on, man. I just know the Lord telling me to transition. Mind you, Shorty got my car, I'm locked up. She got her man, she got her baby daddy in my car. They playing family in my house. All type of mess. So I was like, I was like, damn, is it is it really supposed to get this hard? You feel me? Like it was it was ugly, man. She took all of my stuff from my business. But once again, I bounced back. And so that lets me know that it's it's a greater purpose for me. Like if, if I can do it, anybody can do it. The first and most importantly one would definitely be make sure y'all vibrating on the same wavelength. Like you can't deal with a a low, a low, a high vibrational person can't deal with a low vibrational person, let alone a person who wants something out of life can't deal with a person who don't want nothing out of life. And then like just understand women. Like, understand women, man, and that, I didn't do that until, well, like I said, experience. It took bad, bad experiences to give me that wisdom on, like, how to, how to deal with women or people in general. So I would tell you, whatever relationship you in, to make sure y'all vibrating and y'all want the same thing. What I mean the same thing is, don't be playing with her like, oh, uh, yeah, I want to be in this, 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 what I, this is what I'm in. When you know you happy, free. You don't want to be told what to do. You don't want to be, be, be tied down or be real with her. Say, listen, I got a goal. What you, what's your goals in life? You know who you're dealing with. I got a goal. This is what I want to do in my life. I got you a five-year plan. I got a plan. This is what we can do. You stick behind me. You stick beside me. Not behind me, beside me. You stick beside me. We rock this thing out together. Watch what we create. 